Hello, and welcome to another Science Man digital lesson. Today, we're going to look at the topic of pressure. Specifically, how is it measured? The important thing to consider is how pressure is calculated. Pressure is equal to the force exerted divided by the area that the force is acting on. Consider, for example, an area of one square meter. If a force of one newton was applied to that area, then the pressure would be equal to one newton per square meter or one pascal, the unit of pressure named after a famous French scientist. So a pascal is a pretty easy to understand unit, but unfortunately there are many other units of pressure in use that can sometimes be confusing. The thing to keep in mind though is that they all describe the same thing, the force exerted on a particular area. For example, one of the most common units of pressure is the kilopascal, equal to 1000 pascals. It's used because the pascal is actually a very small unit of pressure, so the kilopascal is a bit more practical. Some units, such as pounds per square inch, are used out of tradition. You'll see PSI used often to describe different pressure abilities and settings on hardware devices, such as the air compressor. Air compressors are simple. They use a series of compression cylinders to squeeze air into a smaller space, thereby increasing pressure. You can read and set the pressure of an air compressor using the attached barometric gauges. The word barometric literally means weight measure, coming from the Greek word baros for weight. This leads us to another unit for pressure, the bar, which was introduced by meteorologist Napier Shaw to describe atmospheric pressure. One bar is roughly equal to air pressure at sea level. Meteorologists commonly use the millibar as a descriptor of pressure on their weather maps. You've probably seen this on weather forecasts, where the areas of high pressure and low pressure are marked in efforts to predict the movement of weather systems. Air will always move from areas of high to low pressure. This causes wind, and combined with the rotation of the Earth, contributes to the circular nature of many weather patterns. Speaking of weather patterns, one of the most devastating hurricanes was Katrina. A hurricane has a low pressure eye at the center. Meteorologists often use a hurricane's eye pressure, along with wind speed, to gauge its strength and potential for destruction. Katrina's lowest eye pressure was 902 millibars, or 26.6 inches of mercury. In some parts of the world, inches of mercury is the preferred unit for describing atmospheric pressure. This unit is a holdover from early barometers invented in the 1600s, which were essentially a column of mercury in a tube with a pool of mercury at the bottom. As atmospheric pressure increases, air pushes the mercury higher up in the tube. You don't need mercury to make a good barometer. You can make one yourself with a simple jar, balloon, a straw, and some tape. Take a round balloon and cut off the end, then stretch the piece of balloon over the mouth of the jar. In order to ensure a good seal and to keep the balloon in place, use tape to secure the balloon by running tape all the way around the top of the jar. Now, all you need to do is take a straw that has had the tip cut into a point and tape it to the balloon at the top of the jar. By doing so, when atmospheric air pressure increases or decreases, the air in the jar will be squeezed or will expand, resulting in a collapse or bulging of the balloon. That causes the tip of the straw to move. You can track pressure changes by marking the position of the tip of the straw periodically. As the straw moves, you'll know the atmospheric pressure has changed. Modern bear graphs operate on the same principle. The only difference is a slowly rotating drum that constantly tracks pressure. I hope you enjoyed learning about pressure. Thanks for viewing this digital lesson.